Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, we're doing some French country thrift flips. For my first project, I'm going to be working on this wooden basket. I love the handles, I love the shape, but I don't love the color. My first step is to take Paint Couture's 2-in-1 primer. I'm using my Eco Brush in the 10-inch size, and I am going to be applying two coats of this primer. It's going to prep the surface for paint, but it's also going to help with bleed through. These particular baskets do tend to have quite a bit of that bleed through, and I also need a light color because we are actually going to be doing some decoupage over the top of this and I don't want any stains bleeding through and ruining my design. After my two coats of primer are completely dry, I'm going to take Recycled Treasures Vintage Wallpaper Decoupage Paper. This is a gorgeous design. It has some script in the background, some lovely shabby looking roses. I'm going to lay it on top of the section where I want it to go and then I'm going to crease it in the sections where I'm going to cut. And then I always like to cut a, about a centimeter away from where I've done my crease so that I know that I'm going to have some excess if I need need it. I'm going to repeat this process for each of the sides. I'm then going to take Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium in matte and I'm going to be working in sections laying down a generous amount of product and then I'm going to start adding my decoupage paper. I've laid it over the top. I'm also misting it with water to give it a little bit more stretch and flexibility and you can see I'm actually using my finger to press the design into the basket crevices. I'm also going in with my brush with a little bit of product on it over the top of the different sections and I'm just going to work my way across doing this, repeating those steps. I did also take a craft knife and I added little cuts along the horizontal sections of the basket there just to help that paper release, to help it lay down a little bit flatter. Now this was never going to be a perfect project because I'm working on an uneven surface but I am going for a vintage shabby sort of a look here. So I'm okay with the wrinkles. I'm okay with the fact that I am going to get a few tears here and there. I just really loved that I could take this beautiful design and apply it onto a plain basket and just give it new life. If you're going to try this, I definitely suggest that you pick a design like mine where it doesn't matter if it's not even or if I have to piece together bits and pieces of the design. You certainly wouldn't go with something like Buffalo Check or something with a very obvious pattern or picture because it might look a bit distorted if you're having to make some changes or some fixes or wrinkles or with the different levels. So definitely pick something that's a bit more forgiving like this design. Once I had most of that paper down, you can see I am going in again and I'm adding that product. I did get a little tear there, but that's okay. We're gonna use some wax a little bit later so that will hide it. So I'm gonna go around and tear off any excess along the edge there. And because the bottom section is wet, it's just tearing along that damp line. And then I'm adding a bit more of that product to seal up those edges. And I'm repeating the same process on the sides and the bottom. I'll be repeating the same process for each of the sides and I have sped it up for you because it was a, a little bit more time consuming. If you don't have access to decoupage paper, you could try using napkins or tissue paper instead. I would probably just leave out the water mister part. I wouldn't be misting my tissue paper or napkins because obviously those materials are a little bit more fragile and delicate than this sort of decoupage paper, which is a bit thicker. Thank you. 
Once my decoupage paper was completely dry, I grabbed Paint Couture's Vintage Moss Mineral Paint. I am using my 12 inch eco brush and I'm going to go around the entire inside of the basket with this beautiful green. This green is actually a perfect match for the green that appears in this decoupage paper. So I was so glad that I had this on hand and I just love how it really does bring out the green in those leaves and it just creates a beautiful contrast. It's going to take two coats to get the look that I want. Once the inside of the basket was painted, I then added paint to the outside strip just along the top as well, just so we had a peak of that color over the top. And then I also went in and added it to the top section of the basket as well. I did try my best not to get too much paint on the handles because I did like how that leather tone looked in contrast with the uh, vintage wallpaper design and that lovely green. Paint Couture's Mineral Paint has a built-in primer and a built-in top coat, so I'm not going to have to go in with any clear coat over the top. Once I have my two coats on there, this will be done. Once my paint was completely dry, I took my brown wax brush. I didn't put any excess on there, and I'm just going around and hitting all those edges just to give more of a vintage look. It's also going to help with the look of wrinkles. It just gives it that lovely aged finish that we're definitely going for. Because I already have the decoupage medium down, I'm able to wipe back as much or as little as I want. And obviously if this is a bit too grungy, a bit too dark for you, you could leave this step out. I'm also going to be adding it to the edges around the top section of the basket as well. And here's a look at our finished basket. This was my first time decoupaging on a basket and I really love how it turned out. I think it's shabby chic, French country cottage. It has all of those lovely vintage vibes. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For my next project, we're going to be giving this little ceramic container with a lid a makeover. I actually like how it looks as is. That little bird is super sweet, but I want to add some florals and some text. These are some scraps from the floral anthology and traditional pots transfers by IOD. I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to just line up that transfer and work out how much I'm going to need. I'm going to trim off the excess and then I'm going to be peeling off that white backing and position positioning it over the top of my little ceramic container. I'm then going to press it down and I'm going to use the transfer tool that comes with the transfers and I'm going to start rubbing and burnishing that design down. And you can see it's already releasing and coming up. Anywhere that I have designs overlapping the edge, I'm just sort of rubbing over those edges to help it adhere. I want the design to curve around the surface. And you can see I'm pulling up that plastic as I'm rubbing. I'm going very slow so that I don't accidentally tear it back too fast and damage my design. And I'm just gonna keep going until I have the whole transfer adhered. Once I have the entire image transferred, I'm just going to use my finger to go around and make sure there's no little bits sticking up. And then I'm going to use the plastic from the transfer to burnish it further. I'm then going to layer the text from the traditional pots over the top. I'm first going to trim off the word Paris because I think it would look really cute to have that sitting on the lid. I'm going to position that there and then press down. And just like before, I'm using the transfer stick to 
rub and burnish that design down and then I'll lift the plastic up. Definitely go slow, especially when you are dealing with text because it can be a, a little bit fiddly and tricky at times. And now I'm going to go in and layer the rest of that text over the top of our florals. I don't need this to be super bright or stick out. I just really like the look of this layered together. This is just going to be a decor piece. So when I'm done, I will spray this with some of Rust-Oleum's Satin Top Coat Sealer and that will be enough protection for the use it's going to get. And here's a look at our second project. This was a quick and easy flip, but I think very effective. Remember, you don't always have to come in with paint. Sometimes you can just put a transfer on something and it is completely transformed. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For our final project, I'm going to be giving this mail and key holder a makeover. I've actually done one of these before, but I did a completely different look. I'm going to remove those little screw-in hooks first. Then I'm going to take Dixie Belle's Sea Spray Texture Additive and I'm going to mix it with chocolate chalk mineral paint. I'm going to pour a little bit of it out and then I'm going to scoop some of that sea spray out and add it to my paint. Add this a little bit at a time until you get the texture that you want. So I'm going to stir it really well and then I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to apply it over the top of my mail holder. This is going to help hide the texture that that little art design left behind. I didn't want to bother with sanding it, but I also didn't want to be able to see that from underneath. So I'm just first brushing that sea spray on, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to dab and stipple over the top of that. It's going to further hide that raised design that was underneath on the front there. And it's going to create more of a vintage look, more like a layered paint effect, which is what we're going for. And I'm going to keep adding that same paint and sea spray mixture to the rest of the mail holder. Once my paint is about halfway dry, I'm going to take my paintbrush and very lightly go over the top of the raised texture that we created. This is going to pull down those peaks that we made by stippling the paint on. And then I'm also going to paint the back. It's going to take two coats of this mixture to get the look that I want. And I also used a hairdryer to speed up the drying process to create even more texture. Once my paint was completely dry, I took Fusion's Milk Paint in the color Toasted Coconut. I'm measuring out about half a cap full, and then I'm going to put an equal amount of water into that mixture and stir it really well until all of that powder is dissolved. I'm then going to apply it to the front section first of my mail holder. I like to work in sections when I'm doing this because I like to speed up the drying process to create more texture. My milk paint was still a little bit thick. That's why we have a little bit of pulling happening. So I did add a little bit more water and I continued, but I am going to be adding two coats. So I'm not too worried about the first layer being a little bit bumpy and chippy. That will just add to the look. I can always sand that off later. So I'm heating up that first layer and then I'm moving on to the inside part of the mail holder. And I'll of course repeat this process on the back of it as well. Once my two coats of milk paint are completely dry, I am going to take a baby wipe and I am going to start doing some wet distressing. I'm going to pull back some of that lovely chocolate tone. It will give it that lovely chippy vintage look that we're going for. I'm then taking a design from IOD's La Campaign stamp and I'm going to be using IOD's permanent black ink. So I'm going to ink that up. I'm then going to use a wet wipe to tidy up any excess ink. And then I'm going to position that in the center front part of the mail holder and carefully press down. Remember to always have one hand holding that stamp in place while you apply pressure. Don't press too hard. You don't want to distort that image. And then when you're ready, pull it straight up. 
I'm then going to be taking a design from IOD's Antiquities stamp and I'm going to first ink up just part of the border design from this particular stamp. I'm going to then use a wet wipe to wipe back any excess in the areas that I don't want. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm actually going to be positioning this design in the left-hand corner of our mail holder and then pressing down. So always remember that you can use bits and pieces of your stamps. You don't have to use them as is. So I'm just pressing that down, making sure to have one hand holding it in place and then pulling it straight up. I'm then going to ink up another part of that stamp, pull back any excess with a wet wipe, and then I'm going to position it on the right hand side. This is not going to match perfectly because obviously the stamp is not symmetrical, but that's okay. We're still getting very similar florals in that design and I'm actually loving how this looks. It looks really dainty. And remember, if you make a mistake, you can always grab a wet wipe and wipe that error back. I'm then going to ink up some more of that same design, pull back any of the areas that I don't want, and then I'm going to position that up the top there. Now, I did only use bits and pieces of this, so you can see I'm not inking up in between uh, impressions there. And it's okay if it's a little bit faded, we're not going for perfect. I'm then going to add some ink to another part of that stamp and I'm going to be positioning that on the left hand side there and I actually took the stamp off the backing because I needed the flexibility to sort of push it into the indent there. The front part where the hooks go was sort of obstructing that a little bit so taking it off the backing gives you a little bit more flexibility with where you can actually add your stamp. So I've repeated the same process on the other side as well. After putting the stamp back on the backing, I'm going to ink it up again and I just want the text this time. So I'm going to add some ink to that and then I'm going to wipe off the border. And then once I've done that, I'm going to be positioning it in the center up the top of the mail holder. I decided I also wanted to add some of that vintage moss from the first project just to the front section of our letter holder. So I'm just applying one coat of that. I just felt like the two-tone look just gave this project a little bit more depth and interest. I'm then going to take a wet wipe and do a little bit of wet distressing. This didn't go as well because obviously this paint does have a built-in top coat. So I did then take some 220 grit sandpaper over the top and lightly distressed to bring back some of that white underneath. I'm going to seal my entire project then with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Waxing Clear and I'll use a paper towel to buff back any excess. Finally, I am going to put those little hooks back in. Thankfully, they were already tarnished and vintage looking, so I didn't have to do anything to them. And here's our finished mail holder. I love how this turned out. I think it's amazing how you can take different parts of one stamp to create lots of different designs. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video and that it's inspired you to use your stamps, your transfers, or even decoupage paper to transform your thrifted finds. Let me know if you had a favorite project from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.